In this Going Awesome Places Ramen series, I travel to Tokyo, Japan to learn just what makes a bowl of ramen exceptional and to discover the art and passion that goes into each one. And in order to find the best one, we try five unique ramen styles. Hey, what's up guys? This is Will from Going Awesome Places and I'm back for another video all about ramen, but this time focused on the different styles of ramen that you can find in the city of Tokyo. From the super popular to hidden gems, I'll be showing you the spots that you gotta visit. If you haven't watched yet, make sure you watch our feature on Michelin star and rated ramen restaurants. But if you're too lazy, well, I guess you're here already. I'm back with Hiroshi-san of Ramen Beast. We're gonna be crushing more bowls of ramen. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Why All right, not? let's do this. Yep, let's do it. We're in the neighborhood of Shinjuku and behind me is Funji. So what is this one all about? This is really famous for Tsukemen. Tsukemen? Yeah, do you know okay. Tsukemen? I only know about it a bit, but what do I need to know about Tsukemen? <laughs> how, do, how does it work like and a, how's it different? The noodle and the soup is separated. Okay. And then people have to dip the noodle in the yeah. soup and then slow. And so I heard that Tsukemen is something that you have in the summer usually because yeah, it's like a cool noodle, yeah, right? Yeah, that's right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but what makes this place so popular? Um, so using the chicken and gyokai, like fish soup. So yeah. it's really smooth. Yeah, easy to crush. Okay, easy yeah. to crush. I like easy to crush. <laughs> let's go in. Yeah, let's do it. So how do you say it? Tsukemen. Tsukemen. Yeah. Tsukemen. Yeah. It's like the end of the world. Yeah. <laughs> the noodles over. Yeah. Okay, so right now, first batch is to bring it into the there, water. Cool it off. Yeah, cold water. For, for the tsukemen. Yeah, yeah. Does he only do that for the ramen? So it's shaking? Yeah. yeah. Like four minutes 20? Yeah. Exactly. Giant chopsticks too. So yeah, tell us about this. Yeah, the fish part on the top. Mm -hmm. Egg, seaweed. The soup is made out of the chicken. It's chicken broth. Yeah, chicken and fish. Chicken and fish. Yeah. Okay. And then no pork. There's no, no pork in the soup. Do they also put minma and yeah. all that stuff? Yeah. Minma and chashu in the soup. Oh, there's hashu in there as well. Yeah. So do you like mix the powder in? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you mix the powder in. So just, just yep. dip it in, yep. and then and it eats. And, and slurp. Slurp, slurp right away. It's actually really good. It's really nice, crouch yeah. and smooth. Yeah, yeah. It's nice and creamy as well. Yeah, right. Well, it's packed with stuff. You got the menma. Wow. Whoa. Look at that. <laughs> Another egg perfection. Get it, get it. Get it all in. <laughs> I didn't think I'd really like to come in, but... Okay, so this is dashi, yep. which is just a very basic broth. Mm -hmm. Is it still the same chicken and... Oh, no, I think it's different, 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 different. Okay. <laughs> Just a little bit? Oh, so you don't need to dilute it too much. Mm. Mm, uh, mix it. Now you've made it really spicy. Mm. Well, still very thick, but... Mm. Okay, so now that we finished our meal, how do we say thank you? Gochizou sama deshita. Okay. All right, let's do this. Gochizou sama deshita. So right by Canada Station is this ramen shop. It's called Kikembo, and they're known for their spicy miso. But for those that don't know, my tolerance for spice isn't that high. So just in case, I went over to 7-Eleven and bought this carton of milk. All right, so what can we expect from Kikembo today? Uh, so yeah, we can try the spicy miso <laughs> ramen here. Spicy, okay, so miso first of all. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and then spicy. Yeah. You said spicy, yeah, which so I'm ca scared of, but. No. <laughs> No, that's fine. It's, the customer can choose the spice level. Okay. And plus, like, numb level. Numb, numb. Numb level. So regular level, how, how bad is it? Am I going to be, like, oh, like spicy sweats? Or, like, what's what's happening? Yeah, if you don't like it spicy, yeah, maybe you're going to sweat. But I think it's okay. Okay, but you, just, also, yeah, you did say stuff. earlier that my mouth is... Yeah, I'm not going to feel yeah. anything. My yeah. tongue... If you go, like, nothing. devil level, yeah, for sure. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I'm not so sure about this, but... <laughs> Here goes. Yeah, Wishes right. luck. Right. Wishes right. luck. <laughs> Here we 
go. And once you enter in, the taiko drums start beating. <laughs> Put the, the bean sprouts. What are they making? Like uh, the, the soup. The miso soup. Oh, this is part of the miso soup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That the miso paste. Nice. That's for back fat. So those are all the spices. Mm -hmm. Put together. Oh, okay. Soup is for uh, made from pork and chicken, mm. and then other soup is made from uh, the fish. For a little bit of splash protection. Hi, Ezra Hi, Wow, look at that. Juicy piece of tasu. Like, this is a massive. It's like a friggin' whole pork belly. And you got the bean sprouts. What is this type of corn called in Japanese? Yangu corn. It's supposed to resemble like a kambo. Oh, I love it. I expected this to be just like, you know, fist over hand kind of spice, but it's got a lot of flavor to it. It's quite complex. Don't get me wrong though. Mouth numbing, like I'm already feeling a bit of the fire, but it's not the kind of spice where like I'm sweating a lot. Um, I can handle this, I can handle this. A little bit of an oasis here with the uh, pork belly. Such a nice thick cut right there. It's nice and sweet, I like that. Really deep flavor. Like the, the spice is only just like very mm. earthy, wooden mm -hmm. kind of flavor to it. Yeah, maybe you'll see that there's a three dip different thickness. Oh, the and the noodles. noodles. Yeah. Damn. Ooh. So good, but so bad at the same time. I don't know if you can see this right now, but I got sweat like all over here. I had sweat coming down my nose, like sweating all over. Oh my god, I need all the milk. Just kidding, it actually wasn't that bad. So I had the medium, medium spice. And yes, my mouth was numb. And yes, I was super sweaty. But honestly, it wasn't that kind of spice that really burned your mouth off or was just uncontrollable. So it really wasn't that bad. I think you could handle it. Next, we take the JR train and make our way out to Kichijoji. Now you guys might know Kichijoji as an off the beaten path place for street food, but they've actually got a really good ramen shop right behind me and it's called Musashiya. So tell us why this particular shop in Kichijoji. Um, yeah, I want to introduce Ieke, Yokohama Ieke style ramen. Okay, cool. That we haven't means, had that before yet. Yeah, not yet. So which means the thick tonkotsu soup with soy sauce. So we call it tonkotsu shoyu style. Sweet. And then customer can choose how like hard noodles or... Oh, your yeah, choice. Yeah. Is that much, uh, more oil or... Okay, yeah. so it's fully so, customizable. Yeah, so many options here. I like that. I like yeah. that. Okay, so, yeah, I'm yeah. excited to try this one. Let's go on inside yep. and see what it's all about. Okay. Yeah, EK is kind of the common thing is so the customer can choose to how uh, thick the taste. Yes. So thickness here. Yeah. Thickness and the oil. Is it oil? Yeah, and how hard, hard the noodles. The noodles are. Okay, yeah. so how firm they are. Yeah. What is kind of the recommended? So basically, I'm older, just normal, like uh, futsu, futsu, futsu. Futsu, futsu, futsu. So right. thickness of the soup, oiliness of the soup, and then thickness of the noodles. noodles. Okay, cool. Oh, wow, it's spinach. Vegetables. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's we'll see how it is. Mmm. Mmm. Really nice and creamy. Wow. Well, these noodles are so different. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're they're nice and firm, but but me medium thickness. I don't know. This is closer to the firmness that we had for most of our other ramen. But like this is definitely like a firmer, like al dente uh, type of noodle. I like it. This is really good. Is there a proper way to have seaweed? Like do you dunk it in, mm -hmm. or so you yeah. get everything? I wish they had a, like more pieces of um, the tatsu here. Musashiya is the perfect place to pair with the Kichijoji street food tour, which you can find out more on the blog. Next up. Now we're in Kitasenju in the northeast part of Tokyo, and this is a ramen shop called Matador. All right, so Hiroshi san, tell me about this spot here. Yeah, this ramen shop serving uh, beef ramen. Okay, beef ramen, yeah, that's beef new. There's, ramen. No, there's probably not a lot of beef ramen it's spots not a in Tokyo. Lot. It's not a lot in Tokyo. Okay. Yeah, it's and super rare. And, and how is everything beef? Like, is this? Yeah, everything is beef. 
Okay, from the soup base. Yeah, soup base, the to toppings. The toppings. And that means like this is this is actually perfect for anyone does, that doesn't eat pork. They can finally have yeah, ramen. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, and anything yeah. we should watch out inside, like things uh, that they do like differently. The uh, just check out the the wild just the shaking noodles. Yeah, it's kind of it? yeah, it's, it's kind of unique. unique. Okay, I hope you're hungry. Are you hungry? <laughs> yeah, why not? Why not? <laughs> All right, let's go. <laughs> That's the roast beef. Yeah. Because they use beef, it's like a, it's a sweeter, t sweeter taste to mm -hmm. it. I feel like in Japanese cuisine, everything is almost like, like a, like an art form. He's like putting on a show, mm -hmm. almost. Yeah, yeah. That one is a, the clear one. Mm -hmm. But it's a, it wouldn't beef be a chicken oil. oil. It would be a beef oil. Yeah, I think it's beef oil. You'll notice that he actually puts the same soup in all of them. Mm -hmm. But it's the sauce of the That's what's there. Is there a Japanese name to that? I uh, use yeah. sushi. Sushi is here. Oh, ankle? Yeah. The gyusuji for shoyu. Uh, but shio? But, yeah, shio is uh, beef berry, not pork berry. Mm, that's onion. Oh, that's onion, you're right. Mm. Well, a totally different flavor, kind of complex here. Let's try the soup. It's, it's way sweeter than chicken base. Yeah, yeah chicken. Sure. But the noodles perfectly laid out back there. It's nice and oily. You got all the ingredients on top. Look at that beef, the roast beef. Three perfect slices laid out. You got the egg there, which we're going to find out in a moment. But really good straight ramen noodles. Nice and thin. Mm. The beef is a little bit chewy, but a nice, nice cut of roast beef. These are like thinner cuts of bamboo shoots. A nice balance to the kind of chewier roast beef. And then on top, I'm gonna show you this. Look at that. Like really sweet, like a, a totally different sauce. Kind of like a, like a brisket. Ooh. Firm on the outside, runny on the inside. A nice orange yolk inside, like just perfection. Such a beautiful balance of, of the beef and the, the brisket here, with like insane amount of sweetness, but it just works really well. And like Hiroshi said, like it's, it's so hard to get this right, but, but Matador's got this all figured out, that's for sure. So in the famous Ginza, along an unassuming alleyway is our next ramen spot, it's called Kagari. They opened in 2013 and they've quickly risen to be one of the top ramen spots in the area. So I hear the shop is a little bit different from the rest. How is this one special? Yeah, this shop is famous for Tori Python ramen. Okay. Haven't had that before, right? Yeah, not yet. This is a chicken, the cloudy soup. Okay, and what does it look like? How does it look different than the others? Uh, so uh, you can't see the bottom, it's really cloudy. Yeah. The, the smooth like chicken soup. And how does this one compare? Like, if you look at Tori Pai Tan, like, where does this one rank? Yeah, that's kind of tough, but I think it's really high ranked shop for sure. Okay, so we're gonna be having like really yeah, good Tori yeah, Pai Tan. Okay, right, that's right. I'm ready for that. Yeah. Let's go line up. Yeah, let's do it. What's interesting is that their Ginza location actually shut down for a bit, and so this is their brand new shop in Ginza. Hey. I got the last. It's very colorful. Mm hmm. It feels very grounded, especially with all the. The different vegetables. This is ginger. Uh, this is fried onion. So maybe after you eat uh, half of the noodles, you can put like ginger or you can put the fried mm. onion. Mm. Wow, that's really strong, like um, chicken soup. Like, super creamy. Yeah. Yeah, we call this tori chashu. Tori chashu. Tori chashu. Let's try this chicken tashu. This is actually a very gentle. Yeah. Like it's not not over seasoned or marinated at all. But I think because you have so much flavor already in the soup, you don't need yeah. that much flavor in the sugar. And then do you like mix it in? Yeah. Ooh, the Tori Pai Tan was so good and really so hard to pick which one was the best ramen shop out of all these five. But what you should do next is head over to the blog and read the full blog post, which has all the information that you need. So those are some next level ramen spots that we went to and hopefully shows you that a bowl of ramen isn't just a bowl of ramen. 
everything that we had from spicy miso, beef broth, tori pai tan, Yokohama style, to Kamen as well, uh, we were able to do all these in a couple days in Tokyo. But if you're not able to, you can always give Hiroshi of Ramen Beast a shout and he'd give you an amazing ramen tour in Tokyo. Anyways, this is Will from Going On Some Places. That's it from me from Tokyo. I hope you had a slurping good time watching. You know what to do. I'll see you guys next time on the channel. Peace.